So welcome to this social distancing episode of American Medicine Today. I am Kimberly Bonatti alongside my friend Ethan Euchre. I'm stuck here in my office. Uh, at least I've got a nice jacket on. I'm feeling sharp. People in the cosmetology field probably don't realize that many of the products they use are exposing them and their clients to toxic chemicals daily. In addition, some of these products are very harmful to the environment. And joining us today is Amber Lopez of Amber Salon Sustainability, whose determination to find safer alternatives is changing the landscape of the industry. Thank you for being with us, Amber. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Absolutely. Now, Amber, um, how about you tell us about your background growing up with, as you say, hippie parents and how it puts you on the path of sustainability? So I grew up, my father is uh, owns a landscaping company. He is a member of the Native Florida Plant Society and a beekeeper. So um, my mom was also just an avid gardener, and it was very traditional for us to always recycle, always take care of the environment, the earth. Um, we were always one with plants and animals and whatnot. And so what made you want to get into the field of cosmetology? I have always had a love for hair or artistic um, movement with hair. I taught myself how to braid. I used to be a dancer and a synchronized swimmer. I was always doing my teammates' hair. And how did you become aware that some of these chemicals are really that toxic? I would go home daily. I would have migraines. Lots of times I would throw up from the migraines. My hands would be cracked and bleeding. And these are all just things of being in a very large salon environment with 16 stylists all using all different types of products. Nothing was natural or organic in that setting, but um, it just really made me think that how am I going to continue in this career? How am I going to continue to have a future if I have to fight this every day? When you went to cosmetology school, to beauty school, were you ever taught about how to be safe around these chemicals? Were you taught how toxic they are or anything? Did they cover any of that in school? So they don't teach you about toxins or toxicity necessarily of products. They do teach you safety measures because that's regulated by your state or your state board legislation. And there's questions that could possibly be on your exam. And let, let's just take it one step further. Um, we're talking about the chemicals that are used in salons. But as we all know, people run to like a Walgreens pharmacy or CVS and they pick up a bottle of hair color and you know, run out to the beauty salon, try to color their hair themselves. And, and then you just have your normal household chemicals, you, shampoos, conditioners, face wash. Do we need to be careful of those too? When you use a color that's purchased in an over-a-counter in the store or whatnot, that particular box of color is made to sell to the masses. So it's going to have a very strong, strong pigment dilute. It's going to have a very strong developer in it. So in order to create that, it's got a higher level of, you know, ingredients in it that aren't necessarily good for you. And in just my knowledge, women will color their own hair and then hop in the shower and let it run all the way down their body. It takes less than 25 seconds to absorb through your skin. So it's like from, from your head to the drain, what's going in your body while that's happening. Same thing with whatever soap you're using or shampoo you're using or what was on your skin, what kind of sunscreen or makeup was on. It's all happening, you know, and then it just is going down the drain. You were also telling me before we got started that apparently uh, cosmetology is one of the most toxic professions that there that exist. Uh, can you elaborate on that? At one point, consider one of the top 10 most toxic professions that you could go into. You know, there's a, a, a seven-year lifespan or time frame in which a cosmetologist can work in the industry without having a health adversion of some Form, whether that be the most common is a skin reaction, but it could be breathing, it could be allergies, it could be an asthma. I was just going to say, hasn't the FDA or anything come forth to try to set more regulations on the products that are out there and have any class action type lawsuits? You know, there's not a whole lot of regulation that's, that happens in the professional setting. I do have a very close friend who's in California who has worked very, very hard to have regulations passed there in California in regard to ingredients and labeling, but I don't know that it's universal throughout the entire industry. You know, I talk a lot about, you know, you don't clean your bathroom with bleach and ammonia. You're taught that, um, but in the, the hair salon, women receive 
color and highlights very, very often. They receive highlights and toners. And these two things, when they're mixed together, if it's an ammonia-based product or a derivative of ammonia, and then you have a bleaching agent, when that salon professional is washing that hair out, it mixes and it off gases. And that happens every single time, just little puffs and a little bit at a time, but that builds up. My wife has been a stylist for almost 20 years now, and she's had skin issues. Um, she has chronic headaches, um, among a multitude of other things. And I guess we've never really thought of that and, and connected the dots. So I'm, I'm glad you're able to open at least my eyes and my wife's eyes to this. It happens to many of us and you just, you continue going. I mean, it's your career, it's your livelihood, it's your survival. And, and you don't necessarily realize that there are options and alternatives that can take you to a better place, but there are, um, and they, they're, they're making their way into the marketplace. It's not saturated by any means, but it's happening. And what are those products made of and where are they manufactured? Are they done right here in the United States? So they, I don't know of one that's in the United States, but I specifically work with a line out of Denmark because that is a very sustainable, clean country, 98.2% um, naturally derived. And I'm specifically talking about the hair color to have that be naturally occurring. I'm good with that. I feel like I can put that on my skin. I mean, I do, and it's it does not itch, burn, make your eyes water, make your nose feel tingly. There are no effects like that whatsoever. Well, and another question too is that people don't often think about, even at home in the shower with shampoos, conditioners, body washes, uh, deodorants, antiperspirants, face washes, things like that. When we rinse off, that goes down the drain where does it go after that? Most of us don't care. We don't think about it. But it does have an effect on, on the planet, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think there was a large company recently that just had to take out, change their whole product lines because of the beads that were in the products that were actually small little beads of plastic. So they had to completely redo their whole product because it was going down through the waterways, out into the ocean, and you know the last thing we need is more plastic in the ocean. And it says on the write-up that you're able to uh, how did they say, recycle colors um, for renewable energy. Why don't you explain to those watching and listening how that works? When I was a salon owner, I did have three salons at one point. Uh, we recycled any unused hair color that was not put onto the client's hair. Um, we collected that in a special receptacle, and then we actually packaged it and shipped it to the company, and they would put it through a centrifuge, clean the water, and then it would become distilled and put back into the ecosystem. And the remaining kind of powdered substance was used to create renewable energy. Are there any other things being done specifically in your industry uh, to help lessen, I guess, the carbon footprint, things like that to be more sustainable? Our packaging is made from rock paper, which is from limestone. We actually have a zero forestry impact. We have a, an ocean-friendly plastic certification. So we take the um, plastic that's in the ocean, we extract it, recycle it, and then use that to create our packaging. We also use biomass in our propellants. Biomass is decomposing plant matter. So that means when you spray a hairspray or you spray a product, the propellant pushing the product out of the can is something that is naturally occurring and it's able to, you know, be breathe, you can breathe it in. Um, but also when you recycle the can, you're not releasing any toxins or gases into the atmosphere that just weren't there anyways. And if somebody's interested in finding out where to purchase more of these sustainable products, um, is there a specific website to go to? So the, our website is ambersalonsustainability.com and definitely I'm available to help answer any questions as well. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much for being with us, Amber Lopez of Amber Salon Sustainability for finding safe alternatives um, for those in the um, hair care industry. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Make sure you stay tuned. Coming up after the break, a story of recovery.